Hello world. Well, due to popular demand, uh, I'm going to be showing you how I make my king oyster jars. Uh, it's actually really simple. Uh, there's only four components that go into them. Uh, this is hardwood sawdust uh, that I get from a local sawmill here in town. And uh, you can see the texture of it is somewhat coarse. Uh, it's mostly um, small particles. It's got a few of those kind of uh, you know little strips in them. And this is really good sawdust because it packs really well and it maintains its shape. Uh, but it's also a large enough particle size that it doesn't pack too tightly. If you use the really fine stuff like you get from a sander, it's completely worthless uh, because it packs so tightly that there's not any avenues that the mycelium can uh, make to go to actually permeate the substrate. Second component here is a uh, wheat bran. You buy this in like 40 pound bags uh, from you know farm supply stores or feed stores, really cheap. Uh, <clears throat> and the last component, or less solid component, is gypsum. You can go buy this at any standard hardware store that has a garden department. And the last part is water, preferably warm water. <clears throat> so I take these and mix them together here in a bucket. Um, and uh, I just use this little handy metal scoop here. And typically what I do is I'll take, I'll start out with about uh, eight, eight scoops of sawdust, uh, followed by two scoops of um, the wheat bran. So that way it's uh, right about a 22, 25% supplementation rate. And I don't do this for all of my, uh, all of the things I use hardwood sawdust for. I just use this for lion's manes and king oysters. And then just a small little bit of gypsum to add in. It doesn't take much at all. And then I'll usually add about three, three scoops, of, you know, level scoops of uh, of warm to hot water. I use warm water because it tends to absorb into the sawdust better than the cold water, and it more evenly hydrates. So I'll, uh, I mix all of the dry components first, and stir them together, and then I add in the water, and you know, just turn it and turn it and turn it until you have an even moisture content all throughout. The best way to check to see if you have the right level of moisture is to let it sit for a couple of minutes after you stir it up and then reach in and grab some off the very bottom. You should be able to squeeze it without having a whole bunch of water come out. A couple of drips is fine, but if you have any more than that, then it's too moist. What will happen is as the, as the jars sit, the water will pool in the bottom of the jar. So this is the substrate now ready to pack into jars. Now to fill the jars, uh, I use a, uh, just a standard canning funnel and uh, a length of dowel, dowel rod here. Uh, this dowel rod I think is, it's either half an inch or three quarters of an inch, I can't remember which. Uh, but when I use this dowel rod, <clears throat> um, uh, the vertical column it creates holds enough spawn that it takes the jars right about three and a half to four weeks to fully colonize. Um, uh, my, uh, I, I have a friend who uh, uses a slightly larger dowel rod, it's like a quarter of an inch wider, and his jar is colonized <clears throat> about a week longer. We haven't had a chance to compare uh, the yields yet to see if that has any impact at all, but it does seem to speed up the colonization. I mean, I guess it makes sense, you know, a higher spawn rate means faster colonization. So, <clears throat> I start out by simply putting a, a thin layer of uh, the sawdust substrate down into the jar sort of get it started, you know, so that way there's something at the bottom. And then I insert the dowel rod down into the center of the jar, and I'll just fill the jar around the dowel rod. You kind of got to use your fingers to sort of stuff it down in, and you can only put so much in at a time. But this is the way that we fill the jar, just fill it around the dowel rod itself. I know this is incredibly entertaining to watch. <laughs> I don't really know how any way to make it more exciting than this. But I use this technique to grow uh, king oysters and also lion's manes. Uh, these jars here are going to be used for lion's mane. That seems to work really well. I'm, I'm really liking this uh, central inoculation style. Uh, it's almost um, I mean, it kind of appears to be sort of a hassle, but it's really not. In fact, I think I prefer this over packing bags, actually, because these bags, you just can't fit too many of them in an autoclave at a time. 
I think these jars are easier to keep keep clean and sterile. They make less of a mess when you try to fill them. So I guess this is personal preference and taste, I suppose. <clears throat> so then you pack it as high as you can until it kind of comes up to the rim of the funnel. And then I'll pull the funnel off. So that way I can sort of flatten out the substrate <clears throat> around the rod and maybe fill it with a little bit more if I need to. I don't fill it all the way to the top. The reason being that uh, a couple of jars I did before, I noticed the ones that were filled the most of the way up, uh, the mycelium inside, you know, kind of goes a little aerial and uh, sort of attaches itself or gravitates towards the filter patch. So then when you remove the lid of the jar, uh, to fruit it, then you tend to, you know, rip off a section of the substrate uh, that's sticking to the lid. You can see this isn't completely vertical, it doesn't make much difference. So then once the jar is filled, then kind of press your fingers around the rod and sort of twist it, twist it up like you're unscrewing it. And then you just kind of make sure that the hole remains intact and uh, wipe off the rim, you know, the best you can. And what you've got here is a jar of packed substrate of saw supplemented sawdust with an empty vertical column in it that you pour spawn in after, after it's sterilized. And you know, generally do that in the glove box. So it's really rather a simple procedure and I, I, so far I've been having really good. Okay. Now once the jars are sterilized and then spawned and then fully colonized, uh, what is done to initiate fruiting? Uh, two different things for lion's mane or king oysters, which are what you're seeing here in front of you. For the king oysters, what is done is after the jars are 100% colonized and they're left to set for about five days for consolidation, you take the lid off of the jar to expose the colonized surface of mycelium and you take a, a blade, I use a, a, um, a scalpel blade, and you just score it. You scrape the surface of the substrate to uh, kind of tear up the mycelium and give it a rough surface. After this, you return the lid to the jar and place the jar uh, on a shelf where it's exposed to a light cycle and the temperature is lower than when it incubated. My jars incubate between 78 and 80 degrees and uh, in order to initiate pinning, I set them just out on the shelf. You can actually see this shelf on the other side of the plastic here. Uh, it's just in my basement and it's exposed to a 12-12 light cycle and it's about 65 degrees or so. Now I'm set for seven days. After the seven days is over, just simply remove the lid and bring them in and set them on the growing rack. And this is what they look like about nine to ten days later. These should be ready to harvest in a day or two. For the lion's manes, it's even easier. It takes about 10 days or so for the jar to fully colonize, at which point you just simply either remove the lid, like these here, and set on the growing rack to, uh, to grow out their fruits, or I find that this is working pretty well. They're just plastic storage lids as I drill a hole in the center of and put the lids back on, those, back on the jars and set them out here like this to colonize. This allows a very localized area to be exposed to the low carbon dioxide uh, atmosphere which triggers uh, primordia formation, allowing a fruit to develop, and then a single fruit will then grow out the hole on the top of the lid, and that'll make it easier to uh, to harvest. And then we should also I should also have a pretty consistent fruit size because all of the jars are the same size. They all have the same culture in them. They all have the same substrate in them, and they all just have that single hole that's the same size. So then I'll have a single fruit on top of each jar that I can just come and twist off and and pick and pluck. So, good luck with your bottle cultures, hope this has helped, happy shrooming.